this is part 49 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss multiple cascading parameters. This is continuation to our previous video, part 48. So please watch part 48 before proceeding. At the moment, in the parent component, we have this style property of type string and we want to cascade this property value down the component tree to any of the descendant components. And for that, we're using the built-in cascading value component. And then in the child component, where we need to access the cascading value, we simply create a property. The name of this property can be anything. As long as its property type is string, it has to match with the type of the cascading value in the parent component. So in both the cases, it is string and it also must be decorated with cascading parameter attribute. So with this in place, this property in the child component is going to automatically receive the cascading value passed by the parent component. At the moment, within the parent component, we have just one cascading value. But what if we have multiple cascading values? Let's include another property here. The property type is integer and this is employee age. So we have a value of 25 and we want to cascade this value also to the descendant components in the component tree. So let's include another instance of the built-in cascading value component the value that we want to cascade down the component tree is employee age. We are cascading two values here. One is of type string and the other is of type integer. And in the child component, we already have a property of type string decorated with the cascading parameter attribute. So this is going to automatically receive the string type cascading value from the parent component. And to access the integer type cascading value, we do something very similar. We create another property. So notice the property type is integer and it's decorated with cascading parameter attribute. So this property is going to receive the integer cascading value that is employee age. And then we can use this property just like any other property within this child component. Let's actually display the employee age right here. There we go, we see employee age as expected. Now, by default, the values are cascaded by type. So in the parent component, we have two cascading values. One is of type string and the other is of type integer. And in the child component, we have corresponding properties. So the string property receives the string cascading value and the integer property receives the integer cascading value. Now, what if we have multiple cascading values of the same type. So instead of this integer property, let's say we have another string property. We want to cascade this string value, border one pixel solid red. So here as the value, let's specify this border style property. Next, in the child component, let's create another cascading parameter of type string. And to keep it meaningful, let's change the name of this property to h1 border. We no longer have this employee age property, so let's delete this. Now, element style cascading parameter value is already applied on this h1 element. Let's also apply this h1 border cascading parameter value. At this point, you might be wondering, both these cascading parameters are of type string and the cascading values are also of type string. So the question is, which value will be cascaded down to the child component? Let's actually understand that by taking a look at the browser. Notice the child component has a one pixel solid red border, but the red font color is not applied. Let's understand why is that by inspecting this element. Notice border style one pixel solid red is applied twice. And that's because if we take a look at the child component, both these cascading parameters are applied on the style attribute. And if we take a look at the parent component, this border style cascading value is mapped to both these cascading parameters. Why is that? Well, that's because both the cascading values here are of type string and both the cascading parameters in the child component are also of type string. Now, the framework does not know which cascading value must be mapped to which cascading parameter. So what the framework does is passes only the nearest cascading value to the child component. In our case, the nearest cascading value is border style, border one pixel solid red. So this value is mapped 
to both the cascading parameters and that's the reason we see border one pixel solid red apply twice. This is not the behavior we want. We want to apply both the styles that is the font color as well as the border style. So we give a unique name to each cascading value. Let's call this color style and this one border style. In the jail component, we use these names to access the corresponding cascading values. So on this cascading parameter attribute, we have name and then we specify the name of the cascading value that we want to access. In this case, we want to access the color style. So we specify that same name right here. Along the same lines, on this second cascading parameter, we specify the name border style. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. There we go. Both font color and border style are applied as expected. We can access both these cascading values even from this grandchild component. If you want to give it a try, pause the video here and give it a shot. Here is my implementation. We've got two cascading parameters. Both receive the cascading value by name and both these cascading parameters are applied on the h1 element of our grandchild component. So if we take a look at the browser, notice even grandchild component has both the styles applied. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.